uh, level. Uh, she contributed to the formulation and implementation of Vietnam's green growth strategy and action plan and to the planning process where environment and climate change issues are taken into account for sustainable socio-economic development strategy plans, uh, active in UNFCCC negotiations, and she's co-chair of the Financial Working Group at the Global Partnership Forum and assistant to co-chair of the Asian LEDs Forum Steering Committee and so much more. And sadly, she cannot join us live for this session, but she sent us a video message and we're going to listen to that now. So please, dear back office, roll the video message now. Good morning. My name is Ching and I come from Vietnam Ministry of Planning and Investment. Uh, today, uh, Vietnam is very happy to jo join this very important and meaningful forum for Vietnam, especially after a series, a series of uh, very huge storms and natural disasters recently in Vietnam. And uh, we think that in this forum, we can learn from uh, other countries uh, in compacting to climate change and also exploring a new cooperation for further, um, uh, for further uh, responses way to to climate change and uh, we would like to uh, share with you uh, Vietnam efforts uh, to combat climate change and also uh, introducing to you the institutional arrangement related to climate change in Vietnam and also uh, some figures for climate finance in Vietnam and also some proposals and initiative for cooperating with you all, especially from perspective of planning investment, we'd like uh, to have more chances to uh, discuss with all of you for opportunities uh, to, uh, to mobilize resources for a natural disaster and uh, adaptation uh, in general. Uh, first of all, uh, we would like uh, to, uh, to to share with you that uh, Vietnam is among the most vulnerable countries in the world to climate change. And uh, the government of Vietnam is quite proactively uh, introducing a, a policy framework uh, according to the joint air force or global joint air force uh, we have special national target program responding climate change since 2008 and uh, in 2012 we have the national green growth strategy and action plan uh, and uh, to uh, have uh, the well prepared for uh, mobilization of resources. We, together with the World Bank and UNDP, have conduct uh, the climate public expenditure and investment review. And from that, uh, we see that uh, the national uh, budget have just only be able to cover 30% of the total needs and the uh, rest of 70% should come from the private sector. And uh, this is also a basis, the baseline for us to consider on the financial structure in any uh, proposal project uh, for uh, further cooperation with the private sector and also with development partners uh, to fill in the gap. And in 2015 at COP21, Vietnam is proudly to be one of the first country to submit the NDC. And uh, last year, recently, uh, we have 
finish our updated NDC and successfully submitted to UNFCCC. In 2020, uh, we uh, have already uh, finalized our National Climate Change Adaptation Plan for 2021 to 2030 with the vision to 2050. And we are also updating uh, our green growth strategy with the vision to 2045. Uh, this is the remarkable uh, t time, uh, time because it's the celebration of our 100 years of independence. We are also uh, working with the World Resource Institute for um, developing long-term strategy toward 2050 at provincial levels because we're following the uh, the same slogan uh, of uh, the cops is the time for action and uh, for the long-term strategy at the central level as shared with you we already have the updating our vgs and now uh, we try to um, apply the new methodologies uh, introduced by WRI firstly at the local level to see how it fit uh, with uh, Vietnam national context and then after that we will uh, have some uh, some experiences uh, to uh, merge into uh, to to the uh, the activities done at the central level and we are also in in the process of developing our socio-economic development strategy for 10 years and midterm SADP uh, and in, in, in these plans and strategy the climate change and green growth are mainstreamed uh, and considered um, very uh, seriously. Uh, and uh, for the National Climate Change Adaptation Plan, uh, we have uh, three main objectives uh, with seven groups uh, yeah, that you can see. And um, uh, of course, uh, we have the institutional arrangement related to climate change. And uh, for the institutional arrangement related to climate change uh, in the uh, adaptation uh, area, uh, we, see, uh, we will have the four uh, main actors. Uh, the first uh, two main actors is Ministry of Planning Investment, who are in charge for developing development strategies and plan. Uh, and, uh, mobilizing and coordinating uh, international and est or external resources including FDI, ODA and climate finance. And uh, the other actor is the Ministry of Finance who uh, is the management of the budget allocation and tracking of government budget spending. Uh, the other uh, professional uh, ministry is Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Agriculture uh, and Rural Development. Um, ministry of Agriculture is the focal point for disaster risk management and uh, for dike and dam and uh, including soft and uh, hard uh, construction uh, for combating to natural disaster and uh, Ministry of Environment is the uh, for complying for UNFCCC and climate change uh, activities in Vietnam and uh, uh, they are working closely with MPI and MOF in negotiating with um, other countries and also uh, domestically uh, we are uh, working closely with each other for annual budget uh, plans uh, uh, including uh, development uh, investment and also uh, 
uh, recurrent uh, budget spending uh, regarding to climate change and uh, adaptation plan. Uh, and uh, for um, other uh, ministries, including Ministry of Industry and Construction, uh, they are on the focal point uh, in relating to industrial uh, areas. Uh, provincial uh, governments is also uh, very important parts. However, now in Vietnam, uh, to come into real action, uh, we need more capacity building for uh, the uh, subnational governments uh, to understand uh, more on how to uh, implement the climate change and green growth uh, strategies, um, localize, uh, localizing on the uh, on the national uh, targets into uh, provincial activities uh, still have a lot of difficulties uh, because of the awareness, because of the capacities in terms of human resources and also financial resources. Um, the, we, we, so that's why uh, at the, now this is a time for action. We are working uh, with the Ministry of, uh, of Environment and also with other ministries to find the best way to, uh, to allocate uh, the, the targets, the climate change targets in the sectoral level and also the provincial level. And uh, we think that um, we uh, will have further discussion in in uh, in in a special uh, uh, topics uh, when we have time, and uh, for the gap of investment uh, for climate change uh, adaptation and green growth that we have uh, uh, done, uh, it shows that uh, we still need the gaps. Uh, for climate change activities from uh, 31 or 32 billion US dollars to 41 uh, billion US dollars. And uh, currently, so it looks like we lost the video connection. Um, I don't know, the back office just notified me that there are some technical uh, problems there. So I assume that we will try uh, to get the video message from Dr. Nguyen Thi Tien Trin from the Vietnam Ministry of Planning and Investment uh, back up and running. Uh, the time for that we would have. Um, in the meantime, but I'm not sure if that will work because <laughs> it's also uh, very technical. And I hope that, uh, uh, but I see you all here. So I assume that I have uh, 60 participants here joining right now, waiting uh, like myself uh, to see what happens next. Uh, we could try another polling round, um, but I'm not quite sure if that will work. So let's find out uh, or let's... Uh, ask uh, Leah in the back office. Uh, Leah, is the, yes. can we go uh, ahead with the polling? Is that okay? Hi, Monica. Um, apologies to everyone. We have a slight a technical trouble here. Sorry also for the video. We will uh, try to make it uh, reappear again. So we can unfortunately not intersect with the polling. Okay, but, uh, we will so have what's the, the next video, step? Um, we will have the video back on in a, in a second. Okay. So just uh, so everyone, in, uh, everyone, in a few seconds, we have the video exactly. uh, back on. Okay. okay. So, so everyone, everyone just stand by. The problem is going to be solved. Uh, pour yourself a cup of tea or coffee uh, or a glass of wine if it's late in the evening already for you, but for all of those in the mornings. Uh, make the most of this, uh, but don't go away because the video message will continue in just a moment. I'll pour myself a cup of coffee, always using every moment for that. Here we go, the video.
hopefully. All right, we won't give up. U.S. dollars to 41 uh, billion U.S. dollars. And uh, currently, we are working with UNDP for, um, for estimating the needs of for uh, for climate change and also uh, to see how much the uh, government budget had covered uh, during the last five years and we hope to share with you the results soon uh, and uh, for the the national adaptation finance we based on uh, the cost of adaptation climate change uh, in terms of uh, the loss uh, by the uh, the percent of the loss by the natural disaster uh, in the GDP, uh, and it estimated is about three to five percent of national GDP per year by 2030. And we, as mentioned, we can only cover 30% of that adaptation cost. So uh, we still need uh, support from uh, external, uh, external uh, resources, including ODI, climate finance, and, uh, and, and, and FDI also. Uh, from come from private sector, and uh, we will share further with you in 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 the uh, later slides. And uh, uh, we uh, would like uh, to uh, in in the forum and uh, in the activities done by the climate services information uh, work with the GIZ, and uh, through a CSI project we get to know the ensure resilience for room uh, and we are very happy that we uh, have the coordination among GIZ uh, projects and Vietnam and other countries can uh, benefit from the very good uh, and collaborative activities like this so we can uh, develop further ideas and the concrete ideas uh, we 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 uh, for for this excellent collaboration is that uh, we have to think of uh, trying our best again uh, to establish a agricultural insurance framework in Vietnam. Uh, so far, uh, about fifteen years ago, uh, Vietnam has think about agricultural insurance but due to many bottlenecks that we have not uh, sus have not been successful because of the awareness because of the uh, physical uh, infrastructure including data uh, database and also the scientific uh, forecast uh, the scientific capacity in Vietnam and, uh, and and the resources in Vietnam have not uh, uh, suitable for 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 getting attractive for developing agricultural insurance but thanks to uh, to CSI project and also re uh, insure resilience project that uh, we once again would like uh, to fill in this gap and uh, with the new uh, thinking of not only reliable on the uh, national um, budget, but we would like to uh, uh, study on a new model on how to connect uh, agricultural uh, insurance with the private sector uh, to uh, in, in engaging more participation from other key stakeholders, not only farmers and also uh, national, national actors uh, and uh, we are on the way to do it and we hope that uh, next year in the forum we can share with you our studies and uh, we also would like uh, to uh, develop the national disaster prevention fund at the central level at the local level uh, we have uh, uh, developed the the, the subnational uh, disaster prevention fund already, but at the central level, 
due to some the uh, uh, existing uh, situation that we have not uh, put into effects of of this fund even we already have the uh, the legal status for this fund uh, but the resources to put into this fund is still a big question for us so with the support from the GIZ uh, we are now uh, reviewing the bottlenecks and we um, we uh, find the best way to 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 uh, to mobilize the resources for this fund, including pro in the short term for project based uh, activities and also for the operation um, structure of this fund, how to make it the most effective and uh, flexible uh, for uh, for for attracting a lot of resources for this fund and uh, uh, we're also uh, learning from other facilities uh, that already, already exist in Vietnam in other areas not only in agriculture and insurance activities but also in other areas so we can have uh, more experiences and from this uh, we would like to hear from all of the participants of your excellent experiences so we can have further discussion uh, to uh, have uh, to uh, have like a good input for for our work in vietnam and uh, uh, for uh, our ideas to work with you uh, we would like uh, to design a public insurance policy and insurance product for public infrastructure investment or agricultural infrastructure project using public investment resources and uh, we also uh, would like to act more actively to join the insure resilience forum and other communications activities uh, to get knowledge and for capacity building um, so that uh, we can uh, develop uh, more solidly at the national and subnational level and uh, we'd like to uh, connecting uh, policy makers and also uh, researchers at universities in vietnam to more uh, globally uh, actively um, in in the global activities so uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I would like uh, to uh, to say thank you once again for GIZ to uh, pro uh, to to have uh, to share with us this opportunity to work with other distinguished guests and participations. Thank you. And a big thank you from us as well, of course, Dr. Nguyen T. Dutrin. And apologies that uh, uh, technical difficulties uh, forced us to interrupt your video message. Uh, but I think we all uh, were very happy when it came back and uh, followed everything you said. So thank you very much. Um, talking of technical difficulties, I have just been informed that uh, while we were obviously hoping to engage you, the participants, as much and as often as possible uh, by using polling questions, it is exactly that feature <laughs> that has caused uh, some problems, probably also responsible now for the, the technical glitch with the video, which is why we will sort of leave that polling now. Uh, but I can, however, share with you what we wanted to ask you, because I think these are quite, uh, quite interesting uh, little facts. And maybe you want to just uh, play with the idea and, you know, use your brain cells uh, to, to briefly figure out what the right answer could be. Uh, for example, uh, agriculture is the main livelihood of how many in percentage of the population in Vietnam. So how many people in terms, in, in percentage, actually uh, live uh, from agriculture in terms of main livelihood? Do you think it's 40%, 65% or 60%? Yeah, 40, 65, 60. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The right answer is 60. 60% 60 uh, of the population in the Vietnam for those agriculture is the main livelihood. Another question that is interesting, how long is Vietnam's coastline? All right, I've been to Vietnam 
I didn't measure the coastline. The possible answers would be 2,200 kilometers, 3,200 kilometers, or 4,200 kilometers. Yeah, I mean, we heard that uh, Vietnam is uh, one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change and rising sea levels. So how big do you think is the coastline? Well, the, real, the real answer is 3,200 kilometers. And finally, again, in terms of percentage, by what percentage could rice yields decline in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam without efforts to combat climate change? So how much rice yields could we lose in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam if we don't fight climate change? Is it 30, 40, or 50 percent? Well, the sad answer is uh, we would lose half uh, of uh, the entire rice yields, 50 percent, if we don't fight climate change. So I know that all of you who participate are very much into fighting climate change and doing the right thing about it. Uh, but nevertheless, it's always, I think, uh, quite impressive to to cross check with those facts and figures in order to confirm that uh, it is the right thing to do. We have to tackle this. So, climate risk in rural Vietnam, financial protection to sustain livelihoods in the agricultural sector. That is uh, the the focus uh, that we're turning to now. Um, and the questions here, of course, is uh, what is Vietnam's strategy for agriculture insurance? What are the existing initiatives? How can these instruments serve the most vulnerable communities? And we will get some answers, and I'm sure more, uh, to those questions. Uh, and we'll hear now from Dr. Tran Kong Tang. He's Director General at the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Vietnam. And uh, hopefully, even if I pronounced his name uh, not quite the right way, hopefully he knows that I meant him. So, uh, Dr. Tang, please activate your microphone, activate your video, and then we're all ears. Over to you. Okay, yeah, thank Mika. So can can you hear me, uh, Mika and others? We can hear you. We can hear uh, you. Thank you. So, okay, thank you very much. So I um, might introduce uh, myself. So my name is Tang. Uh, I'm working at the Institute of Policy and Strategy for Agriculture and the Rural in Vietnam. And uh, I come here uh, with my colleagues, uh, Mr. Ting. And uh, next slide, please. And um, uh, based on the uh, the orders uh, from the organization board, uh, my presentation will focus on the uh, four things. Uh, the first, uh, I would like to very um, a quick review about the agriculture insurance in Vietnam. And the second, I try to review the current policy for agriculture insurance in Vietnam now. Uh, and also the existing initiative included as well. Uh, and the last one about the contribution of the agriculture insurance for the vulnerable communities. So next, please. Yeah, next, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So um, uh, you can see here the uh, this slide, there a lot of numbers and a lot of the uh, uh, Letters because uh, we would like to review uh, the agriculture insurance development milestone in Vietnam. And uh, you can see uh, that the, uh, actually the agriculture in Vietnam started uh, in the 1980s. However, uh, uh, that's only uh, we applied in 1982 for Betty only. And, uh, we only apply in very small area, only two districts, and we about 100 uh, farmers in both. And uh, the agriculture insurance is the really developed uh, in the 2011. And you can see we can put here like a phase three, where the government of Vietnam uh, uh, implemented what we call the national pilot uh, uh, program for agriculture insurance. And in the national pilot uh, program for for agriculture insurance uh, in 2011, uh, we applied for in the very last scale with the 20 provinces. And uh, there's, uh, there was about over 300,000 farmers participated in the program. And uh, next one, based on the uh, national uh, pilot program, the government of Vietnam issued the decrease 
uh, we call the degree 58 on agricultural insurance. So this is the first degree uh, on agricultural insurance, and it can be like the first legal framework for agricultural insurance. And uh, uh, last year, the government also issued the decision 22nd uh, for uh, the policy to support the agricultural insurance in Vietnam. So next, please. Uh, in terms of the uh, strategy for agricultural insurance, uh, the government in Vietnam is uh, was very concerned about that. However, uh, due to the a lot of like uh, difficulties, that's why the, I mentioned that uh, after the national pilot program, we just started uh, uh, the agricultural insurance. So you can say that the agricultural insurance in Vietnam is the new one for all. And also, neither Missy, Dr. Chin also mentioned in the uh, her presentation, one of the the big uh, issue for agricultural insurance in Vietnam is the we lack of the legal framework. However, uh, we also uh, how can I say the knowledge of the people, uh, the farmer is still also very uh, uh, new with the agricultural insurance. And uh, uh, in the coming year, the government of Vietnam will consider agricultural insurance as important financial tool to prevent and to overcome risk uh, in agricultural production uh, and continue to improve the legal framework to remove the agricultural insurance. Uh, Vietnam will continue to improve the institutional system to support the insurer. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, beside uh, uh, Decree 58, beside, beside the decision 22, uh, the government of Vietnam now also have issued the how can I say the different like uh, uh, regulation for three kind of product: uh, rice, uh, uh, livestock, and livestock. Uh, and at the moment, we only covers buffalo and cattle, and also the swim. Next, please. And uh, in terms of strategy, the government also. Uh, considered like uh, uh, IA is very suitable and also one of the important strategy in the coming times. And uh, one of the uh, strategy to develop the agriculture insurance in Vietnam now is the government would like to raise awareness for all the stakeholders, including the farmers, enterprise, and also the government officer. And uh, beside that, the government also promote some different like a pilot project uh, I don't know, but maybe you some you know about the one of the the uh, we call the rice project funded by GIS and uh, the did project also uh, uh, how can I say developed the uh, insurance for rice in uh, two provinces in Vietnam. So next please. Uh, here I would like to go more deeply in one some of the how can I say uh, initiatives. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, now there are three kinds of agricultural insurance uh, products uh, apply for uh, Vietnam. The first one for rice, we apply the we call the uh, rice yield index insurance. And also in term, we also apply uh, for the uh, livestock, uh, which cover buffalo and cattle, and also aquaculture. Uh, uh, we cover the insurance for tiger stream and so for white net stream. And uh, uh, in the, uh, according to the decision 22 of the government, uh, the government also subsidize the uh, premium for the poor and the needy poor, uh, 80%. Uh, for the normal household, um, normal buyers, the government subsidize 20% of premiums. And uh, uh, at this time, uh, the agriculture insurance also apply in the quite uh, big areas with the uh, 20 provinces in Vietnam. Next, please. And uh, uh, in the with different commodities, uh, the government also covers some uh, natural disaster and some disease. If I remember with rice, uh, the national disaster uh, are the covers, uh, like including the storm, uh, flood, uh, uh, 
heavy rain, uh, landslides, and did also apply uh, like a cold, cold weather, and did also apply for buffalo and cattle. However, the, with the disease, uh, for for example, for rice, there's only some I mean like a popular disease for rice. Uh, we apply like for example yellow drops, uh, street uh, leaf and uh, uh, rub disease, right street uh, drop leaf, and uh, need applying uh, um, for buffalo cattle. That two main disease uh, uh, apply for African to insurance either food and mouth disease and also the arthritis. Uh, beside the um, this uh, the the um, uh, African insurance it apply follow the degree fifty eight. Uh, that's one uh, commonly from the African bank we call a big the agri bank uh, also did some like a pilot uh, for the livestock insurance and. Uh, they also the, uh, apply the similar way with the uh, 22 decision in Vietnam uh, for, for host of uh, 20 provinces in Vietnam. However, uh, beside that, the, uh, the company and also the, uh, the dry cattle uh, very, uh, has, however, closely together. So beside the uh, agriculture uh, insurance, the company and also the uh, farmer have a like a we call it a contract farming. So that make the insurance is a more like a, uh, how can I say um, efficiency and also the level risk we reduce because the company will take care uh, the uh, house and uh, support the farmer in terms of technical. Next please. Next please. And uh, uh, about the third issue, the how the agriculture insurance contribute uh, and to support the vulnerable communities. Uh, as I mentioned about the government uh, priority in Vietnam, the, in terms of the agriculture insurance, uh, the government also even like a, in the national pilot program, and also at the moment, all the policy also support the, the poor and the nearly poor household. Like for example, like in the national pilot program from uh, 2011 uh, to 2014, the government supported 90% premium. And uh, with the current policy now, the government supported 80% of the premiums. So it means that the government are also very uh, concerned with the poor and the nearby poor. Yeah. Next please. And then either with Take the statistic from the over 300 uh, household uh, participated in the national pilot program in the, from the 2011 to 2014, and you can see that the uh, nearly 80 percent is the poor, and also the nearly poor is uh, about 15 percent. So it means that the uh, uh, the uh, agriculture insurance uh, of Vietnam at the moment. Uh, can be seen like uh, one of the, uh, how can I say, the strategy to support the poor and the, the, the nearly poor farmer. Uh, honestly, uh, uh, I think it brings a good point, but sometimes to develop the uh, agriculture insurance, follow the mark, like expand it, it sometimes it's uh, not easy. Uh, if we just focus on the small household, however, in terms of contribution to the vulnerable group, it is also a very good uh, policy. So next please. Uh, okay, because we have only 10 minutes, so I would like to uh, to stop my presentation here, because uh, uh, there's a lot of things if you need uh, to discuss, and if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, ask me uh, after that. So. Uh, again, thank you very much, uh, the organization, to invite me to come here to present, to say with you about the insurance in Vietnam. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dr. Tang. And of course, people can ask you questions because you participate in the panel uh, in just a short while. So I'm sure some questions will come your way and uh, everything that you felt you couldn't fit into those 10 minutes, you will have time to do uh, during the panel discussion, no doubt. So thank you.
very much, uh, Dr. Tamu, for, for now, uh, because we have one more presentation coming up now, presenting the main findings of Vietnam climate risk analysis, empowering climate resilience, development and transformation in Vietnam. Um, and uh, for that, uh, I hope we are now being joined by Annette Detkin uh, from the Insure Resilience Solutions Fund. Uh, so there she is. Uh, uh, good day to you. And we're very much looking forward to your presentation now. Again, you've got also 10 minutes. Please activate your microphone and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Monica, for that nice introduction. Uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, introduce today and um, illustrate some results of our climate risk analysis for Vietnam uh, that we were conducting over the last three months in cooperation with ETH Zurich and AXA Climate. Um, as uh, Insure Resilience Solutions Fund, we are a product development facility funded by KFW and in its mandate for the German Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, Co-funding specific product development for uh, insurance products, we know very well that insurance is of course not a panacea and that it needs to be complemented by other risk reduction measures and adaptation investments in order to make the development sustainable and also allow financial sust uh, sustainability of insurance products in the long term. Therefore, we also offer climate risk analysis to support our partners uh, to make informed decisions and we are currently conducting two studies in Vietnam. One is a detailed analysis using the methodology of economics of climate adaptation in cooperation with our colleagues at UNU University and the support of the Canto Resilience Office. And this is a study on the city level. Therefore, um, studying the climate risks Canto is facing over the next decades. The results of these studies are not available yet, therefore I focus today on the analysis, the fast track study that we have conducted, as said, over the last three months together with uh, colleagues of AXA Climate and ETH Zurich. And this is um, a study solely based on open source data. So please, the next slide. And the question is, of course, um, why is it so important to know more about uh, climate risks? And this is very well illustrated uh, by an analysis here uh, published by um, ADB, illustrating the, the climate risks of the city of Hue. And as you can see on the slide, the total potential uh, risks uh, city of Hue is facing is um, the modeled loss of over 1,000 billion um, Vietnamese dong. This uh, significantly exceeds the last largest historical loss that was recorded in 1999 and by far outreaches the actual budget um, available for the city for disaster recovery, not even accounting 5% of the potential loss. Therefore, uh, this analysis reveals the financial gap that uh, the city of Hue is facing. And this gap, of course, um, threatens to increase over the next decades, given the climate change and the expected increase in, in the intensity and frequency of natural disasters. So, um, in order to account for climate risk, what are the questions that policymakers need to address and answer um, in order to adapt um, uh, their adaptation planning and their national determined um, contribution plans in order to address climate change? Next slide. The questions actually that needs to be answered is, first of all, what are, is exactly the damage that we are expecting over the next decades in specific sectors? What assets actually are the most uh, exposed to climate risks? Second, what are options then to address the risks and reduce uh, potential losses in the future? And given that funds are limited, the third question is then, of course, how can we actually prioritize 
First of all, which measures are the most cost effective? Second, where should they be implemented? And then, of course, how need, do they need to be designed in order to really have the impact that we like to on risk reduction? A climate risk analysis can be a very useful tool to really answer these questions. And my um, presentation today is actually to illustrate how climate risk insurance uh, and uh, sorry, climate risk analysis is um, a, a flexible tool that can be adjusted and then also help partners to uh, answer these questions. Next slide. So therefore, uh, we did a fast track analysis uh, using only open source um, models and data in order to study the risk of tropical cyclones and coastal floods, storm surge, including sea level rise that is expected over the next decades. Looking specifically at the agricultural sector, um, at potential losses to residential houses, and then of course also looking to which extent the population of Vietnam might be affected by these risks. But issue then, um, the results show that surge actually is the um, the hazard that will um, potentially have the highest losses, they will be focused then uh, as a next step on potential measures in the area of coastal protection to reduce these risks in the future. And um, I will show you today some of these results. So how do we go about this analysis? As mentioned, we were only using open source data and models. Uh, therefore, next slide, please. We used uh, a platform that was developed um, by the insurance sector and is further also um, developed further, including additional risks now um, um, possible in the future. And that uh, by ETH Zurich, it's called the Klimada um, model platform, which allows to model climate risks uh, on um, given probabilistic event-based simulations. And it needs actually three inputs. First of all, uh, we need data on uh, the hazard that we would like to investigate. Then second, uh, the exposure of the assets that are exposed to these hazards. Here, as said, we were looking at um, agricultural production on um, residential houses and then, of course, also on the population. Third, we need to then introduce uh, assumptions on the vulnerability of the assets that uh, are analyzed. And given these three inputs, uh, the model actually allows us to, first of all, analyze the risk, but also look and um, analyze then potential adaptation measures uh, with respect to their cost efficiency and um, therefore allowing impl implications on um, the potential decision of prioritization of these measures. Next slide. So the hazard that we analyzed, of, uh, I said, were tropical cyclone and um, coastal flooding. Therefore, here, just uh, as uh, an example, we used um, historical data over the last 40 years on tropical cyclones in Vietnam. Uh, altogether, more than uh, 260 events were recorded. And we uh, then simulated um, for each historical event 50 um, uh, storms in order to account for uncertainties, but then also allow us to look into the future and assess also the future um, risks given um, certain climate scenarios that we are assuming. We were looking here at the IPCC climate scenarios uh, given by the RCP 4.5 and 8.5 specifically, a more, more moderate, but then also a more pessimistic outlook. Next slide then. Now, uh, at, since we were looking um, at the risk on a national level, it was of course a challenge then uh, to really assess the exposure that we were looking at in the, in the three different uh, aspects. Here, the example of houses. Of course, we did not have uh, the 
value of each single house in Vietnam. So uh, what we had actually was the capital stock um, given on uh, residential houses in Vietnam. And we could use Kalimada then in order to assume the distribution of this um, asset values over the um, entire nation using satellite data on night light intensity, which allows us then um, to estimate the, con the distribution, geographical distribution of this asset value across the whole uh, country. Um, this allows then uh, actually an analysis on, on the resolution of one square kilometer and um, uh, therefore uh, really allowing also the analysis on a much more detailed um, geographical basis. Next slide, please. Yes. Right, so here, uh, given the limited time that we have, just one example of what kind of information we can then uh, conclude given uh, the results of the model and the analysis that we were conducting. Uh, first of all, we can actually estimate the, act, the average annual loss that is expected for each sector here. The damage on residential houses is under today's climate already uh, assessed to be more than 2.6 billion US dollars each year. Um, furthermore, if we account for climate change, this will increase by 11 or even 16 percent, depending on the climate scenario that we are looking at. Um, and uh, since we have a very high resolution of, uh, as said, one square kilometer, we can zoom into uh, the very uh, um, exposed areas. As you see here on the right hand side, we were just um, illustrating the expected increase. So this is just the incremental uh, additional loss that um, certain areas in Vietnam are facing due to climate change. And we can look specifically and the provinces and even um, very detailed set square kilometer um, areas where these um, dam damages, where the losses are expected to be extremely high over the next decades. Next slide, please. Now, we were not only looking at residential houses, and uh, but also on agriculture and people. And here you see the results just uh, very quickly, um, accounting for the potential loss uh, in percent of the total value of these assets or the percentage um, uh, of affected people in relation to the entire population. And what we see is that the sector um, that will face the highest increase due to climate change is actual, uh, actually the agricultural sector. And this is not even accounting for saline intr intrusion or uh, other risks, but here we are focusing only on uh, coastal uh, floods, um, the impact of surge, so to speak. When it comes to um, the expected losses in absolute terms, though, we um, will see that the highest losses are expected for the housing sector. Therefore, um, as mentioned earlier, we will um, face a potential loss of up to three billion uh, US dollars um, in a pessimistic um, climate scenario in the future. Now, um, we looked at what are potential measures that um, the Vietnamese government and the, the on the national, provincial, but also community level can um, implement in order to reduce these risks. And we focus here uh, specifically on uh, measures on coastal protection, given that storm surge is one of the major risks. Next slide, please. Specifically, we analyzed a set of measures, including rehabilitation of sea dikes, gabions, uh, but also the plantation and rehabilitation of mangroves and assume that um, combining these three measures, we can actually prevent a surge up to three meter water depth um, in, uh, in the future. And taking into account now the cost and benefits of these measures uh, mainly implemented in the Mekong Delta, 
the model allows us to identify those measures that are, first of all, most effective, but also uh, have the highest cost efficiency. And uh, next slide. You see here on the horizontal axis of this graph, the total loss um, and to, or total risk that um, the Vietnamese um, are facing due to so surge. And um, as mentioned, um, due to the measures and um, their respective effectiveness, we can now see that C dikes uh, seem to be the most uh, effective with respect to the uh, amount and, and the share of risks that can be reduced by this measure. When it comes to cost effectiveness, which is then illustrated here in the vertical axis, we see that other measures are uh, more um, advantageous and therefore uh, the analysis allows to make um, uh, actually give policymakers the relevant information to actually make their decisions and to choose between one or the other. And um, this can be also then analyzed and adapted in the analysis according to the preferences and also the possibilities uh, in the local context. The graph also shows that actually there is a, a gap, right? There are some remaining risks that cannot be addressed by physical adaptation, and therefore um, other instruments come um, into play here. And this actually shows the potential relevance of um, climate risk insurance that could then also account for these remaining risks. And uh, we also have the possibility to look at potential um, uh, design of these insurance uh, solutions and also the potential costs that come with these um, with the specific design. Therefore, my uh, conclusion here, what we would like to show is that a climate risk analysis is actually a very potential tool to address the three questions that I raised uh, and that are most crucial for governments to um, include further the future climate risks in their decisions, in their adaptation planning. And I hope that we can um, support our partners in Vietnam and Vietnam in this respect in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Annette Detkin there from the Institute Resilient Solution Funds and uh, this very fascinating uh, climate risk analysis there for Vietnam. Well, it's time uh, basically to digest everything that we've heard and uh, surely get some more input also. Uh, so uh, I would like to, first of all, remind all the participants that uh, you can uh, submit questions, which uh, I'm happy to pass on to the panelists. And of course, I would like to introduce you to the panelists. Uh, so for one, we welcome back Dr. Tran Kung Tang, Director General of uh, the Institute for Policy and Strategy for Agriculture and Rural Development at the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Vietnam. And uh, basically all the panelists that I'm introducing now, if you would just keep your microphones muted, but switch on your camera so that we have the whole panel visual available. Uh, I also welcome back Annette Detkin, of course, head of ISF Management at the Injury Resilient Solutions Fund. Uh, also welcome Josh Ling, Climate Change Specialist, Asia-Pacific Climate Finance Fund Manager at the Asian Development Bank. We welcome Nguyen T. Min Nok, Technical Advisor at the Deutsche Gesellschaft for International Zusammenarbeit, the GIZ uh, in Vietnam office. Uh, we welcome, uh, I hope I say it correctly, Khusraf uh, Sharifov, uh, Senior Technical Advisor on Climate Resilience and Disaster Risk Management uh, at the UNDP Vietnam Country Office. And last but not least, Karina Wally, Head of Public Sector Business Development at AXA Climate, member of the Insurance Development Forum. So hello to all of you. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we should get hopefully some questions in from all those uh, 60 plus participants. Um, in, in order to get a uh, debate going. Uh, but first of all, I would like to pick up on, on, on something that Annette just uh, mentioned in her uh, climate risk analysis and the questions that are being asked, you know, damage is, can we expect 
uh, which which assets are actually affected, what, what are the options to reduce this potential damage, and what's the cost-benefit balance there, uh, all very valid questions. And the results that you just described, especially for Vietnam, uh, uh, basically leading to that uh, coastal protection seems to be uh, the most adequate response there, uh, certainly to the damage that could be done to agriculture there. I mean, who exactly has access to your risk analysis? Is, uh, uh, is this, uh, uh, you know, are you just saying we, it's, it's there and if you want to have a look at it, do approach us or do you approach governments or ministries or insurers? How does that work, Annette? Well, we offer the, the support that it means uh, if there are interested partners who would like to uh, look and, and assess their risks in, in more detail, we're happy to uh, to support them. So uh, we don't actually um, address them actively. It's it's uh, an offer that uh, is open to, to all partners that uh, are interested. Um, but then on uh, the access to the information uh, and analysis, as, as I mentioned, we, we are just using open source uh, models and open source data was actually only used for that for that specific uh, analysis. Um, now, depending, of course, on the level of uh, analysis, if you uh, if you actually want to zoom into a more uh, smaller region, or as we do now in, in Qatar with our colleagues from UNU University, uh, you need more detailed information. And there, of course, um, you might also need other data. Yeah. 